Good morning, listeners. How are you? This is Jim the Keys, bartender, coming to you exactly, I guess, a year older. But I mean, I was only, I'm only a one week older, actually. But the calendar, I took another trip around the sun, and that was yesterday. And I don't do a podcast on my birthday. This is a little too, what would you call it? Egomaniacal, right? For me. For the way I do things. I mean, once you get to a certain age, having a big party and stuff sounds a little too much like a third world dictator or one of those celebrities that need to uh, reinforce that they're worthwhile or something like that. I feel pretty good. I feel pretty loved as it is. Sometimes, I guess a birthday kind of reasserts you, your importance in your social unit, whatever that is, and that's my family and my friends and my coworkers and things like that. But otherwise, if truth be told, I still feel pretty dated, even not on my birthday. So what what happened is the wife planned a little trip. We went down to Key West. I know, we're in the Keys, we went to Key West, but it's just a totally different vibe down there, you know? It's a walking, more of a walking vibe. What do you mean walking vibe? I don't know if that's the exact term of life, but it was more walking. It wasn't very busy at all. We stayed at a nice place called the Silver Palm Inn. It's really, I mean, it's like a hospital when you call it, talk about the uh, cleanliness of it, which... It's kind of, you know, concerting, which is better than disconcerting, right? It's pleasant to know that the place is clean. Even 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 the comforter looked clean, which it looks, you know, every time you see comforters or, or curtains and stuff like that, you think how much DNA is on there, how much, how much human ejaculate. You know, I stress human because uh, that would be horrible to even contemplate other I don't know. Is it worse having animal ejaculate on a comforter or maybe a dog? You know, I that's gross. I don't know why I'm going there. I it's it's the morning, so I shouldn't do that. But it was very clean. The pool was clean. It was nice. It wasn't. It's exactly what you want during the pandemic COVID age. So we went down there. We brought. We were responsible. We brought masks. We wore masks where it was required and things like that. We didn't get really in there tight. There was only a couple places that were that looked like they were in season. And it always seems to be like Irish cabins and what else? What other places? That was it. That was it. Maybe the hog's breath a little. But this time of year, it is sparse down there, especially without cruise ships coming in the daytime and we're walking down the street mobbed you know you can go to some place and sit down you don't have need too many re- there was one place we went to and they, they had uh, around 7 30 they had pretty tight reservations which really i guess whenever you call a place and they're busy and they need to make room for you and they did make room it was the 915 on duval street and that's the address 915 Duval Street, which is a great, I wholeheartedly endorse that name. Just like, think about it. It's your address. What do I use for all my company? Use Keys. Show that we're in Florida Keys. Keys Bartender, Keys Notary. When I did the baby rental, I didn't rent babies, remember that. I just rented the equipment that people needed for babies. So we went down there. State got down there, left there on uh, Monday morning. I have Monday and Tuesdays off, which would work great having two days in a row. If you know people in the restaurant business, having two days in a row are godsend. Even though, you know, there's people that have Friday and Saturday off or Saturday and Sunday in the restaurant business, and I just don't get that. Why would you not work those nights? But it was, it's pretty good. So I, I wrangled myself a good schedule. It's a little longer right now because I have a couple friends that I work with who are on uh, a vacation, but not, you know, kind of a working vacation, but they are on vacation. 
So we're filling in, having different roles. Excuse me. I Pardon me. Having different roles to fill when that person's away. But they are sorely missed. And so, so I have off Monday. We, we get up in the morning. Uh, the daughter is old enough to spend the night by herself. She's mentioned she's going to be 15 in, in a month and a half. And she just made calls for being a little more independent. She needed to be a little more independent. We didn't. She wasn't too keen. You know, she's still making that transition to being independent. I think we're doing it. We're not being too protective. But be, you got to be, you don't want to be one of those parents where you don't give a shit or you're overly protective. There's like a happy balance in between. And you want to be responsible and things like that. Now, for Key West, let's get to it. Key West, it's still, even when. It's still the drinking. It's one of the, you know, like New Orleans and Las Vegas and Fort Lauderdale. It's a drinking, drinking culture. And I go down there. I drink club soda, whatever. That's it. But we went to Margaritaville. And last week before I went on that mini vacation, a friend of mine came and he recently stopped drinking. He started drinking uh, a import that says zero zero on it, and that means zero percent alcohol. Which it's not that I can't drink a little, like an NA beer, O'Doul's, and worry about being back on there. But I I can't. I I know there's like point point oh oh five like. Only one tenth the amount of alcohol in it as a weaker beer. Let's say a point oh three or point three instead of three percent or three point five percent. And some of them lo- lower ones are like point one five, but that's still alcohol. But they now they have zero zero, where there's no alcohol in it whatsoever. That. Is something I can feel behind. Now, what was really interesting, we were going to Margaritaville. The wife doesn't have a margarita. What does she have? Something, a vodka drink. And uh, I mentioned, uh, do, do you have that import? And they said, no, they mentioned a popular beer. I don't want to say it because I don't want to advertise it without getting paid for it. But it was a well-known beer, and it's in a different color can. And I said, yeah, give me, I didn't even check what the price was on it, stuff like that. But I figured I'd get one of this, and it had zero in its name. And it tasted like an okay, you know, an okay domestic beer. Okay. Not, you know, some of your purists may get all pissy and say it tastes like shit and stuff like that. But I did it, and I finished it pretty quick. But you know what's funny? When there's no alcohol on it, I have no urge to have another one. Give me a club soda after that, (laughs) you know. But if there was alcohol in it, I would have drank like 12 of them or 14 of them or just, you know, made sure I had one in my hand. And, you know, it's funny because there was zero. I can just walk out. I can walk anywhere with it. There's no, even though technically it's a beer, it's not a beer because there's no alcohol in it. So we went down there. We, you know, we, we, we had a good time. We had some great food. A lot. I ate a lot. Obviously, my thing used to be down there was, uh, you know, eat some and drink a lot. Now, I eat a lot and drink some, meaning, but no alcohol. So, we're walking around doing that stuff. We we ended up going to Irish Kevin's and it was a young young girl. We're around. She goes, hi, the seat's here. You want to sit down here? And I thought for a second she was wearing green. She was a server. And she wasn't. And we sat down and it was crowded and they were doing a drinking game in front of us. And it was like literally five. It was surreal for me because I was in there before. I don't think I was. The last time I was in there, I was in there when I was interviewing Irish Kevin, the owner and the manager. 
and be one of the bartenders. But we had, uh, I, ha- I was drinking at the time. And this time I wasn't. So I sat down and th- every bar was crowded and stuff like that. And I sat around. I don't, I'm not trashing. It's just busy. You know, it's one of the few places that's busy. It's just, that's what they do. It's their gimmick. They get everyone in there that's drinking. They you know, have a little drinking contest. We're sitting around. No one sitting there a couple minutes and we're just not. If we were with more people, maybe the vibe would have been better. And we, actually, we went up to, we went to the Bull. If you're not familiar with the Bull, it's right on Deval Street. And on the second floor is the Whistle or something like that. The Whistle something. And the Whistle Bar. And on third is the Garden of Eden. And the Garden of Eden is clothing optional. My wife wanted to go up there. And we weren't going to get naked. She wasn't going to get naked. I mean, I would have. But, I mean, I have this thing about giving all my clothes and my wallet to her. And, you know, if she really wanted to get me, she could just hold on to it and walk downstairs. And I would just be stuck up there naked, not drinking and stuff like that. And I I think I I would kind of do that. You're not allowed to bring out your phone or anything like that. You're not supposed to be on your cell phone so you're not taking pictures and stuff like that. So it was night. We went up there and it was just people. They look as we come up. We look at those people and they look at us and everyone's closed. And we're looking like, you're you're surmising and you're going, well, I wouldn't really want to see them naked. And they're looking at the same thing and they're going, maybe, oh, maybe I want to see them naked. They wanted to see, I mean, that's what, and obviously that's why Abby went. She wanted to go up there. I just think it's kind of your, 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 voyeur, or voyeuristic. That's easy for me to say. Voyeuristic to walk up to a place that's closing optional and not, uh, you know, and not get undressed, you know. <clears throat> but if you're the only one getting undressed and you're the only one, you know, it's, uh, the the point is made and not made, right? So we're we're there. We go to a couple different places. The the wife had a couple glasses of wine. I am very fortunate to be to have Abby, who took me town, and we had a great time. We ate at some great places. She we went. Oh man, I'll tell you, desserts are you know really getting me now. I wasn't like really a dessert guy, but I saw caramel apple. I got it for Sky. It's still sitting in here. I don't think she ate any of it. So I'm ready to go to it. Yeah, I know, caramel apple. And there was a giant cookie. They have the giant chocolate chip cookies. For me, it's like a tooth. And what else? Ice cream. I ate some of that small food at the 915. You know, when you go to a really fancy place, some really fancy, fancy place, you you can get all different types of things. And they're inventive with the type of things so they had like roasted what kind of turnips or roasted not turnips some kind of root vegetable that's kind of like a potato but not a sweet potato yam roasted yams maybe it was delicious and then we had some ceviche what was it lobster ceviche for appetizer and then we had she had some type of Mushroom ravioli, and I had lobster ravioli. And right afterwards, I'm eating, and it's going, oh, you know, it's one of those things. You go in a fancy place, you know, you get the portions are different, right? You're paying for something. You're not paying for big food, you're paying for good food and tasty food and presentation. You don't get all pissed off when you go to a place, it's not the Golden Corral. So, when we ate, but I gauge it differently. When I'm down in Key West, I'm used to drinking a lot and stuff like that. And usually those calories are fulfilled from, you know, the beer and the bourbon that I was drinking. But I'm not drinking beer and bourbon, even with the zero zero. The zero zero only had like fifty calories in it. Yeah, less than half of a light beer. Cause alcohol, you know, alcohol's the one that carries most of the uh, calories. So I'm still hungry. We walk out and of this restaurant. It's nighttime and walk by a p- place. And I thought it was the pizza place I liked, but it was New, New York style pizza. And I always liked that thin crust Neapolitan pizza. 
So I just, she goes, why don't you grab something? And I go, well, I, you don't have to ask me twice. So I walk up, order two slices, and like six minutes later, I said, you don't have to get them real hot because I'm just going to eat, eat these things. And I ate those, and then we went and got ice cream. And I think where we got the ice cream, I also got the cookie, the giant cookie, and I ate half the cu- cookie, and it was, you know, just came out of the oven, so I had chocolate all over my hands. It looked like maybe I had to use the bathroom but ran out of paper and oh, so I'm not gross I'm not trying to gross you out it's just like when you eat a warm chocolate chip cookie and you have like one napkin you know a giant cookie that's it you got chocolate all over your face on your hands and you're looking what to do and you're ready to rub it on your pants why don't do that um oh Abby's calling she doesn't realize I'm doing a live show so I guess I'll give her a call in about 10 minutes I apologize I'll send her a text Maybe that'll help placate my sweetheart. You know? Well, you gotta be. Um, I am doing a podcast. I am doing a live podcast. I'll call you in, what's a half hour? Minutes. Okay, there we go. Um, so what we're doing? So we go get that stuff. We drive, walk around. I'm not drinking, so Abby's not. Abby's not drinking now because I keep on asking, "Do you want to drink?" And she doesn't want to drink. And you know, when we get to Irish Kevin's, there's no one coming around. It looks like you got to really work the bar and stuff like that. And it's funny when you're not interested in having an alcoholic drink, you're not in that hurry to get all of someone's. Thing, but I'm waiting around, and you know, five six minutes, and when I re- realized that it was more bar service, and and then having to talk to someone, I'm thinking in my head, do you have any zero alcohol? And they'll they'll say no, but we have O'Doul's or uh, Clawson Holler, which is good stuff, but I mean, it has a percentage, so I don't want to tempt fate. That was pretty much it. We had a good time. We we got up in the morning. We went to this place called Bagatelle. We got up early, and she did a little shopping at Bagatelle, French place on Duval Street. And once again, a very good place for breakfast and stuff. And just a huge breakfast, though. It's funny. I thought it was associated. It was associated with the nine one five. And I'm thinking, oh well, they're going to have you know breakfast for some breakfast. I like to have. The art breakfast, you know, like the culinary treat where it's not that big. I just need to put something in my stomach. Well, I ordered a homemade corned beef hash, which was huge. It was homemade. It was delicious. It came in a bowl. We had to, they looked like uh, roasted sweet potatoes with the homemade corned beef hash and and scrambled eggs done to perfection, and it's just it was wonderful and delicious coffee. And I was just surprised at the size. You know, I'm surprised when it. I'm never surprised when it's real small because that's I expect small food when you pay a lot of money. You know, when I pay medium amount of money at an okay place, I think there's more food. So I went against my nature for this one. I didn't go for the food that I normally would do, like steak. I didn't go to steak because I can do steak at home. I like steak. You can go out and cost $75 for a good steak now, $75, $80 for a big steak. But I don't really eat that much anymore. I guess that thing. But it's funny. I'm not going to talk about my birthday anymore. It was great. My daughter made me some brownies and cupcakes and... We had a nice dinner last night when I got we got home, and I guess that's that's about it. Another trip around the sun, and I don't, I know I'm talking about it still, right? And said, Jim, it sounds like you really care about your birthday, and I said, Well, I don't really want a birthday party, I don't want a birthday cake. I'm not shy about telling people how old I am. I'm just shy about the premise of celebrating a birthday. I don't know. I just have that vibe. I always think it's like a third world, like Edie Amin. You, you have a birthday or, or a guy from Three Amigos. And, you know, whenever you're like one of those ten horn dictators or leader of a group, you want everyone to celebrate you. 
I mean, it's like you, people aren't paying attention to you enough. I'm like, I get enough attention paid to me. I don't want it. Some of it's positive, some of it's negative. Birthdays, you don't need it. So I guess maybe if you're lonely, you need those birthdays. I, I don't. I don't really need that. So, but I do appreciate it from my loved ones and my my friends when you know when they acknowledge it but I don't need too much more than that to say hey, it's a birthday it's good to have you and stuff like that blah, blah. now the thing I don't understand is people and I think I probably said it before with this comment that older people say to you if someone's older you and says don't get old now I think what they meant is don't get older don't fall apart. But what it sounds like they're saying is, you know, if you have, you have an option. Like, what are you going to do? Fucking, what are you going to cut off my head and freeze it? Like Ted Williams or Walt Disney? You know, cryogenics? Getting absolute zero? Or do you, do you like maybe Elon Musk or, or Jeff Bezos? Or Richard Branson built a spaceship that goes close to the speed of light and you can slow down, but it doesn't matter. You're, you're not really in that scenario going near. It's you age the same amount on the spaceship. So if you go for 200 years, you'll age 100 years. Now on Earth, it may go a million years. You know, everyone else will be dead. So that's only relative. So that doesn't work. Cell rejuvenation. Well, they haven't done that anymore yet because they just, you know, cells age and they don't replace. And they just, for some reason, they just, they stop when something's fully grown and that's when everyone starts aging, right? Otherwise, things would grow through the rest of their lives, right? That's kind of like the thing. Hmm. I may have came across something. I don't know. But... Or, you know, the, the coldest option is just die right then so you don't get any older. You're dead, so you didn't get any older. Or you can do that weird Benjamin Button thing where you're like, oh, well, instead of getting older, I'm going to get younger, which that isn't fucking any better. I mean, you start, you, he started out as a baby, but he was an ancient baby. And then as an adolescent, he was like really old and then... Later, middle age, he started, you know, working on a boat and stuff like that. And then when he got really old, he was started looking like a young man. Right? Went through his prime. Kept on getting more hair and more hair. Well, older people get more hair, but it's different parts of their body. So, you know, it starts coming out your, you know, your ear and your nose and all that stuff. So... You don't really need to hear that. That's great. Uh, the picture I posted for the show is a recent one. So that's me uh, from last, the beginning beginning of the month or the end of last month. So that's me and Abby in Poland. So that's me. And I, I know I'm getting, I'm getting older. I'm not feeling so bad. But unfortunately, because I lived such a poor young and middle age life like when I was younger I didn't work out that much I smoked a lot I drank I didn't sleep that much and then I guess when I started entering middle age I stopped smoking <sighs> didn't really start cutting back and drinking until I, I had to abstain because I was there was no cutting back for, there's no cutting back for me hence the 0, 0.0 alcohol and it's not that I'm terrified because I'm a bartender. I just I'm just aware that you know a little bit doesn't really help me, and it could very much hurt me. So and yeah, a little bit doesn't like it doesn't take a tw- tinge off or something like that. And if I if I I can see him trying to drink like a case of beer in order to get a buzz, it's like eating rum cake. And say, oh, put a lot of rum on it. Put a lot of rum on it. Put a lot of rum on it. You know, she's, that's, I'm drinking then, you know. So I don't do that. Um, so, yeah, the Benjamin Button thing. So, 
I, I'm pretty much going to say, I think what people say when they say don't get old, they say, hey, try to maintain a youthful demeanor. Right? Be youthful demeanor. Try something new. Do things, not try to, don't be cliche trying to adopt a younger persona. I don't think I did. This is me. This is not me trying to be me when I was 20. When I was 20, I was different. So this is me being me at 58. Yeah, I know, 58. That's in, And that's okay. I just try new things. Keep on working out. Take my supplements. I'm not going to be like I was at 25, 26. But then again, there's a lot of times I'd wake up when I was 25 and 26. I felt like I was 100 years old. Because of what I did the night before. I had amazing recovery skills, though. Amazing. But I I kept on giving myself, you know, hampering myself with my lifestyle. Physically. Now, I have to really maximize what I'm doing in order to get the returns out of my body. That <clears throat> I guess if I had quit smoking 10 years earlier, it would have helped with the lungs. I mean, when I was a kid, I had asthma, stuff like that. Why the fuck would you do stuff like that? But that's, that's neither here nor there. I'm done talking about that age thing. Now, we're going to move on to a different topic since I was there. There was um, two things. I'll start easing into it. So recently, people were talking about at work and online about the price of produce going up and, and meat. The meat has gone up astronomically. Chicken wings themselves, chicken wings, I don't know, did they triple, the price tripled? And is it because we have less chickens? I mean, obviously when there's demand, you can always, with chickens, there's lead time is like two, three months, right? The way they grow and stuff like that. What what changed? Well, it's meat processing. It's gotten a lot more expensive because we have less people to work in it. And there's a lot of COVID protections and things like that. And after some research, it turned out that, you know, people don't realize this, but at our meat processing plants, a lot of our food service processing, whether it's agriculture or working at these big food plants, they depend on immigrants. And a lot of them are undocumented immigrants because it's a shitty job much like the service industry and stuff like that and uh, the resort industry they depended in the united states agriculture food processing the service industry lawn care they depend heavily on people of questionable immigration status and that's the way we rig things here in the united states because we want it that way we want to have cheap lawn care cheap food Cheap, well, even though it's not affected by immigrants as much. You see how people complain when the fuel prices go higher, but it's not even close to what it is in Europe and Asia, the fuel prices. So we expect low prices for food and don't expect a big rise in it, but this kind of bared it. And what happened is people always said, oh, there's tons of people coming in, blah, blah, blah. So I try to talk to people. I have my theory and if my theory holds up I figure people could follow the logic in it and the logic was for a bunch of years we've been getting hard on um, undocumented immigrants and especially here in the Keys I've noted and this is just one of these things anecdotal evidence that I haven't seen any new Immigrants in this area, younger ones from outside that don't speak. She's all been around for still working in the business. Some of them work in the business long enough that they do well and they buy their own. But there's very few of them that I've seen leave, the older ones, that got their immigration status, that are working hard, and they started their own business. They're doing very well. But we don't have those new ones to work in the kitchen. So we got more people the the, the staff in the restaurants are more, let's say, American, documented, but they're people that don't work as hard. 
because the price isn't it. And the, the, the money isn't there. People that work in these borderline industries should do it for a reason. The undocumented go there because they're undocumented and their jobs are not choice jobs, not high-paying jobs. So they had to make those high-paying jobs. So then the price of food goes up like that. Well, the same thing happens in meat processing plants. And when we started getting making these domestics, uh, you know, these undocumented immigrants feel unwelcome and started putting barriers to it and doing deeper searches and investigations and raids and all that stuff, people, you know, there's certain, they don't feel like it. So I'm talking, they don't feel like going to these places, trying to get a job, then getting kicked out and sent back. So what's the point? You know, some of them didn't. Once they come for work. Now, some of them are still coming, obviously, because they're afraid for their lives. You know, some of these countries are poorly run and they're dangerous and they're still coming in. But they're not coming in at the rate because we're counting everyone now. We got these camps and stuff like that. And they're just not making it back down here. But I tell people that and I tell them, I say, well, these processing plants aren't, you know, getting these undocumented immigrants. And they go, first person goes, Oh, or every every person I talk to goes, oh, they're home taking money. I said, are you saying docu- newly undocumented workers are coming here, not getting a job, and then going on unemployment? I don't think you know how it works. If the older undocumented are still working and not home, the ones I knew for like five, six years are still working, why would they be working? Why would not be home? Why wouldn't they be home making the money? Because they would have the money they were offering would have been more than what they make, and they would be making time. But no, there's no new people doing that. You just don't. It's just not one of those things. It's not logical. Try to explain. You try to walk people to the water. But you can't make them drink. You can't make them think logically and say, listen, it's just because we don't have the people to do the jobs anymore. Yeah, they would take it because people were paying like $10, $12 an hour for dishwashing, which is, for an undocumented worker, is huge. Right below minimum wage is right in their wheel for them. And that's how these mom and pop places worked. And some of the bigger chain ones. They depended on them. We just don't have them anymore. There used to be Guatemalans and and Hondurans and all these people walking around and stuff like that coming in for the jobs. I know. People say, well, that's illegal. Well, that's how it's set up here. We want cheap food. And that's the way it is. Even Mar-a-Lago had, uh, until they started, you know, this guy ran for president. They had undocumented workers there. They didn't have a problem with These big places didn't have problems with them. These wealthy gated communities because they had a different way of checking people. You know? So, leave it at that. Another thing, while we're at it, uh, the one of our regulars was coming in to catch and there was this nice woman, an older woman, who used to be a singer. And she's retired. And she's friends with another set of regulars. I know, it's going to be a tenuous thing. Well, the, the, the gentleman I was talking to, the regular comes in. He comes in all the time, frequently during the day. He comes in for one beer, right, and hangs out. Sometimes he has two beers and multiple times during the day. And one night, it's Saturday night, band's playing. He's there. He happens to be African-American, older man. And he starts talking to a woman who happens to know him through friends of hers. And it's a friendly conversation friendly conversation it's not very busy it's a Saturday night I know it's Saturday night it's not very busy well it's that time of year I told you what happened in Key West so there's this guy at the table and he always knew he was kind of you know I knew his politics tilted a little conservatively but he always had this happy thing about him he's a big guy real big guy maybe an inch not anymore an inch taller than me but I guess at one time he was a formidable guy. And he's about, probably about 10 years older than me. But he's hurting a little more. So he comes walking up to say hi to the regular, the African-American gentleman who's a regular. 
And he goes, hey, so-and-so, hey, why are you talking to the white women? And I heard that, and I go, what the fuck? And we go, whoa, and he, and the other one says, what are you, a race? And he goes, no, I'm not a race. And I'm like, wait a second. He made that comment, like, real lighthearted and stuff like that, and I thought, that's kind of like casual racism. Like, people say, you can't say anything anymore. Well, fuck, man. You know, this guy he was talking to was in his 60s. He's in his, he's about, he's about 10 years older. They're both 10 years older than me. So that would have made him born in 1952, 53. So he was a young man in the 60s, a child. And he, the the African-American dude, he could remember really well what it was like during desegregation days the white you know the white water fountains white bathrooms you keep places you can't go in and the guy tells me all the time he goes oh yeah that family was really racist they've been down here or something they were that's bullshit you know and he he says it. he saw it. I mean people say how does he know if they were racist he says he was there when this shit was going on and the shit that other guy said about talking to white women they used to get arrested for it you could get arrested for talking to white women. It was called harassment. People, you know, they Emmett Till, all these shit. They got they got lynched. Lynching was a big thing. And if they thought you were interacting with white women and white women were reacting to you, and when the white women who were interested in black men got they either kept their mouth shut, or they rolled over on them. When I say rolled over, they said, well, ah, this guy who was harassing me because they want to preserve their reputation. You know? Some of these white women were egging them on and, you know, knowing they could get in trouble. Nowadays, there's no trouble you can do anything. It's called flirting. It's called flirting. And not too long ago, I'm going about... 55, 56, 57 years ago, it was a big deal. Age, in 1963, when I was born, a black guy that got accused of that could have got himself arrested, beaten, harassed, or worse. So that casual bullshit, why are you talking, I mean, in a lifetime, I pull that in Germany with him going, oh, are you a Jew? They don't do that shit there. And that's a little further back. That goes back another 16. Now, that was in the super, now they went super extreme, but we were super extreme too at one time. Actually got an argument with someone, a disagreement when I said the South, the United States at one time. In modern civilization, you can argue with me or not and say Egypt was and stuff. Was a, is well, the United States was the largest slave holding civilization, numbers wise. And now in India, you can say India and uh, may Egypt, maybe. I think India is the one that's a competitor, but India wasn't like a single nation state. It was multiple. If you can, it's because it's a group of people. You can just say Europeans sold and slaves was the largest one. So it's like because you're talking about a geographic area. I don't want to get into too deep there. But this floating these ideas out, trying to make these jokes to see if you can still say that shit. I find it kind of bullshit not call it out and I called it like this and I said you cannot nope and they go it's not one of those things where you, no no it's it's like making fun of a, a heavy person we're not going to do that you can call it cancel society or something like that but can you you can understand if you have those feelings that makes people feel uncomfortable right Is it hard for you to understand that? 
you know, it's just you need some. That's what racial sensitivity training is. You don't go and do the one thing. Now, if you're comfortable with someone, you're doing that. You know, there's always a line to be crossed. And that's the line when you say it in public. It's a, it's a stupid thing. You know, because it was so sensitive because of the thing tied up into it. Like, if a guy who has a history of molesting animals and you say something and goes, hey, are you going to marry that dog? And there's a different connotation to the comment when there's a history behind it. When there's no history behind it, like the shit I say to my regular who's happened to be an African American has nothing to do with racism and everything with me, with both he and I being assholes. And not necessarily there's no racial, uh, racial overtone, which is a beautiful thing when you can get into a conversation when there are no racial overtones and you just be an asshole for asshole's sake. And that's the way to do it. So the guy could have went up and said, so-and-so, what are you doing talking to all the pretty women? Aren't you married? That was the thing. You could have done that. Because don't you have a little lady at home? There was a whole bunch of shit you could say. But he had to go there. And I disagree with it. And when you're in that place, yeah. You can't do the, use the N-word, can't tell that jokes and stuff like that. I don't care if there's not one there. Not one of those things if I want to do. And I'm not going to freak out. I don't freak out. I just say you're done. Because we don't need you ca- causing trouble there. I have yet to have a fight in front of me. A physical uh, altercation at this place. I haven't had one had to break up one of those in over 20 years. But I'm always there in the beginning when they start doing it. I said, nope, you're not allowed to do it. Stop it. I don't know who, who started it. Stop it. And, and usually when it's something like that, I'm going to say, hey, you know what? You're gonna, if you're going to start shit like that, you may be done here. That's the way I leave it off. I know it's kind of negative, but hey, be positive. Be on the right side of history. This is Jim the Keys Bartender. I'd like to thank you for listening to the show. Uh, we are on the cusp. We're doing great. We're almost at 500. Uh, it's very busy right now. I'm going to probably take it really easy, easing up the 500. I'd like to do the 500 show out. So I only expect maybe like two, maybe three shows this week and maybe two, three shows next week. And then we'll do the 500 after Labor Day. Maybe. And if you do like the show, share it with your friends. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. That's Keys Bartender. Keys Bartender. And my email address is jim at keysbartender.com. If you have any questions or you'd like to say hello, I'd like to thank all my foreign listeners and all my local listeners. Uh, have a great day. And I will talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>